can download this file. It's in the description, but I also have some code in the description that I have placed in a little bit of a notepad right here. So this code you'll find in the description. We'll need it later when we start working on a button. But so for now we have this open and I need to tell you what's going on here a little bit. So what I want to happen is when I click on a button very similar to this that says, it's, it'll say red, the red box will spin, but no other boxes will spin. When I click on uh, a button that says green, the green one will spin orange and blue. So I had intentionally planned this out so that all boxes sit there and then they move independently at different times. And in the same breath, um, while the blue box is moving, the rest are all again sitting there. So some other things that I, I need to tell you is the red box, if you follow it over, starts on frame 10. The green starts on 30. Orange starts on 50. Blue starts on 70. That is important information as well. And I designed that with intent. I wanted it to start on 10, 30, 50, and 70 because they're easy numbers for me to remember Then like 13, 28, 27 like it doesn't I wanted to start on tens um, so but I also needed a waiting period so I needed them to sit there right in the beginning so from frame one to nine nothing moves and the red starts on 10 so 10 30 50 and 70 some other things you also see these A's above a keyframe a means there's an action on there and in this case it's a stop action so what's happening is I want to be able to click on a button that says blue and it jumps to frame 70, it plays frame 70, and then at the end there's a stop action. So every single one of these actions is code to make the animation stop on that frame. So green will play and it'll stop when it gets there. So that's some things that I have happening in here. Now layer 9, I'm going to go ahead and double click and name button. Some animals call, uh, animators, animals, <laughs> uh, will type in butt because they think it's funny. So we have a, a bunch of butts on the screen. But I'm going to make uh, several buttons out of this button right here for blue. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on this frame, or, which highlights the button very quickly. Or with my selection tool, I can click and drag over this, the, the box that I have and the word blue. I'm going to right click. Go ahead to convert to symbol. I want to make this a button. I'm going to call it blue and say OK. I have my blue button. And I need four of these. I need, so I'm going to right click on this button. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call it green. And then I'm going to open up green. Double click on green. Take out blue. Type in green. And if I need to edit green and move it around a little bit, I'm not going to waste time right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, go back to my scene with this arrow up here on the left and duplicate either one of these. Let's call it red. Double click on it to change the word in here to red. And this is an area where I might need to center it a little bit. And go back to my main scene, duplicate one more time for orange. And they all have capitals at the beginning, so I want to be consistent with that. Spelling, when you're presenting something, um, spelling matters. If you capitalize one, capitalize them all. It's just for professional look. And then they all have capital letters. They all look consistent. These things over here, nobody sees but you, so you can misspell these. Your layers, you can misspell or abbreviate because that is you working. But the things that people see, you want to be professional about for people to take you seriously. Oh, I already have that on the screen, but I do need green on the screen, orange, and red on the screen. So now I have these in my library. I'm going to go to properties, back to what we normally see. And for each one of these layers, I'm going to start with one of them. It doesn't matter. 
I need to give them an instance name. So because I have this one selected, I'm going to use type green with all lowercase letters. And then I'm going to give them all the same. I'll call that one orange with lowercase letters, red, and blue. Go ahead in and give them all instance names. Then when I have that done, I can rearrange these however I want to. Maybe I want to stack them in a line. Maybe I want to stack them in a row. But I do want to adjust those. And the last part will be before I check it. If I look on the button line, I can see that there's a keyframe on frame one. And there's nothing else along here. That's good. That's a good sign. If you see another keyframe along the way, it's only going to work up that far. So if you have another keyframe, you got to re highlight the free frames after it and remove them. But this is just the way I want to. As soon as you see, again, two keyframes, it's not going to work. But my first keyframe is where I want to put all of the button codes. So I'm going to click on that keyframe, go to my actions panel. And again, this code is in the description. You can go ahead and copy it. Come back to my actions panel. There's four buttons. I need to paste this code so that it exists four times. Then I need to change a couple of things. So the first one, the button name, I'm going to call red. I'm going to change it where it says button one. So now I have red, red, red for this to work. And red starts on frame 10. Remember I said they start on 10, 30, 50, and 70. So I'm going to go to... So this says I want to go to frame 30 and then play from there. I want to go to frame 50 and 70. So we learned that a couple minutes ago. I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. And then I'm going to go ahead and start putting in my other button names. So I have green. I need to put that green in three places. Orange, three places, and it, it needs to be spelled the same each time. If you spelled it wrong, it's not going to work. It does need to match every time. I used lowercase letters before in my instance name, so I want to put that there. And then I can close out of here because I can always go back. If I need to open it up, I can always see the code. I know I put it on frame one of my button layer, so I can always go back to the actions panel by right clicking, going to actions. But now I just want to see if it works. Control enter. And it does. So when I click on orange, orange moves and it stops. When I click on red, red moves and it stops. The other thing that's happening is if I go back to animate and then do control enter it stops right from nothing spinning right from the beginning and the reason I that happens is because there's actually a stop action on frame one on this layer so if I play it every button is working if for some reason yours isn't working I would again check this button layer make sure that there's no other keyframe or anything blocking it from working, it should work from frame one to 85. There should not be anything else in the way. Um, and you can also check to see that you have red, 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 and then the same for all the buttons. And then the last thing I would check if it's not working is if I click on red, there should be an instance name that matches that says red, and this needs to match the code. And then I would check blue and make sure that there's instance names for all of these buttons. And that's how you can work with multiple buttons on a page.